All right, good evening, uh, biology people. Uh, here to continue with our discussion on the cell cycle. Um, so up to this point, uh, we should be relatively, uh, you know, knowledgeable experts on our interface. So we've covered the resting phase, the gap one, we get into our DNA replication phase of the S phase, uh, another resting phase in gap two, and that brings us to mitosis. So um, I hope you've watched the, the little introductory video. It's uh, from your Pearson, the Bioflix video on mitosis. I think it does a real uh, clear, very you know, nice way of, of, I guess, explaining mitosis in a, in a visual format, in a, in a sort of dynamic way, instead of just lecturing. So uh, mitosis, is going to be broken into a couple of phases, right? So mitosis, we say, is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And this is designed to uh, sort of separate the genetic material, the DNA, uh, the chromosomes. Um, this is overlapping with the process that we call cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is the actual separation of the cytoplasm, the reconfiguration of the membrane. Uh, but all of this is designed to help us uh, convert one cell into two. So mitosis, also known as asexual cellular re reproduction. And if you forget everything, if you forget everything else, please at least remember these two things, right? Why? Why does mitosis happen? Uh, it happens for two purposes. One, for growth, to allow more cells to be sort of uh, brought into an area, generated in an area. Um, and for repair. So once we get injured, once there's damage to that tissue, that tissue must repair itself. So how does that happen? By the process of mitosis, by the, the different mechanisms that happen within each of those phases. So again, uh, allowing an organism to grow. So we started as one fertilized egg and that, that fertilized egg then underwent mitosis and replicated and that allowed the sort of the arrival of more cells until what we are, what we see today, these trillions of cells. So uh, cellular uh, sort of growth allows for, for more cells to be brought into an area, uh, generated in an area, and for uh, tissue repair. Without these two things, we couldn't function as we do, right? If we can't repair damaged tissue, uh, we would break apart very rapidly. So we need mitosis to happen on a... Um, just a very correct, normal uh, basis there. So we will begin with one cell and that cell will replicate into two cells. And those cells would be exact copies, identical copies, kind of Xerox copies of, of each other. So if you understand this sort of uh, schematic, you understand the cell cycle. Again, not that super complex like the electron transport chain and cellular uh, respiration. So we have a cell in interphase gap one. Um, now that cell progresses to the S phase, S stage of interphase in green, right? So we, instead of having one set of DNA, we have now two exact copies of DNA. Uh, we progress into mitosis, now the blue, which is going to separate then our, uh, our cell into uh, two basically two genetic uh, areas. So DNA is moved from, you know, one sort of entity is separated into two parts. So mitosis is the separation of the genetic material. And then overlapping, we have cytokinesis, which is the actual separation of the cytoplasm. Um, and this is the cell cycle. And each one of these then would start its own interface, its own interface. So again, one cell, Replicating its DNA is DNA then being separated within that same sort of cell, and then that cell separated in half in cytokinesis. So the video does a better job of this. It kind of gives more detail on what's happening within these phases, but very, very quickly, I'll kind of elaborate on the key points of each phase. So uh, mitosis prophase. Prophase is the very dynamic, very chaotic part of mitosis. Uh, lots of things are happening. So the weirdest one of them is that the nucleus, all those, that phospholipid bilayer, that double uh, nuclear envelope uh, disintegrates apart. 
So those phospholipids um, basically lose their position in the membrane. The membrane dissolves apart. And, and all of that genetic material, all the DNA within the, um, the nucleus just diffuses throughout the cell. So uh, remember at this point, the S phase has already happened. So we have double the amount of DNA that we would normally have in the cell. Um, and to keep track of all of this genetic material, the cell starts to form these chromosomes. And chromosomes now can become visible with a microscope. Also to help minimize the chaos, we have a part of the cytoskeleton that we call the spindle, spindle fibers that develop. So all of this is trying to minimize the chaos that is prophase. Uh, this is old school, probably before a lot of your time, but if you remember old cassette tapes, right? the tape, the music, the analog uh, sort of sound is held within the tape. Um, and if all of the tape is pulled out, it, it, it's not good. That's not how the tapes work. So the cassettes have to then wrap and wind all that tape around these spools. So again, that's what the cell is trying to do. So it takes that double helix and it starts to wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap and loop and wind around these little proteins that we call histone proteins. So histone proteins. Um, before prophase, when we're interphase, the DNA just looks like that double helix, just scattered everywhere. In mitosis, we then have the formation of these chromosomes that loop upon themselves, loop upon themselves, and get more and more and more and more and more condensed. Um, we have some new vocabulary now, right? So this condensed uh, DNA, we call it chromosome. That chromosome is going to be double because of the S phase that happened in interphase. So we have two exact copies of the same genetic information. So these two exact copies are going to be called sister chromatids, and they're going to be held together by a centromere. So uh, collectively, so we have the uh, all that scattered DNA in DNA. Um, an interphase. Once we enter into mitosis prophase, all of this mess gets wrapped and wound up. Think of like your shoelaces. Instead of having the shoelaces sort of untied, we tie them so they're kind of out of the way. They're not just sort of stringing around everywhere. So we end up with one chromosome, one chromosome, one chromosome, one chromosome um, held together at the centromere again, holding together the two sister chromatids. So one chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids held together by a centromere. So again, all of this sort of uh, aggregates down to form the individual chromosomes that we know. Uh, and for humans, we're gonna have a total of 46 chromosomes. These 46 chromosomes are gonna have different genetic information, different instructions, different sizes. Uh, but they get uh, sort of aggregated together. One chromosome made up of two sister chromatids held together by that centralized centromere. Right? So again, vocabulary you're going to see on the exam. One chromosome made up of two sister chromatids held together by one centromere. And again, humans would have then a total of 46 chromosomes. So that's prophase, right? So that's prophase. We're starting to see this really cool technology here where uh, we can see the chromosomes in blue starting to form. The nucleus is gone, right? And then these yellow spindle fibers uh, that, that uh, are going to help to guide, connect, attach to these chromosomes at the centromere and kind of navigate them where they need to go. So different kind of uh, microscopy showing the, the sort of the the degradation of the nucleus there, visible chromosomes. Uh, we progressed into metaphase. So mitosis metaphase, middle, mediophase, where the centromeres are going to be aligned in the center of the cell. The middle cell, the middle, the, the metaphase plate, as they call it. So the spindle is going to arrange and guide and pull everything to the center. And again, the video shows this a lot better, a lot more easier to visualize, I think. 
Uh, next, we go to anaphase. Ana in the Greek language means to go, to separate, to, to split apart. So the spindle is going to pull to the left. The spindle on this side is going to pull to the right. And that centromere gets torn apart. So this is what's supposed to happen. So we made two exact copies of DNA. This is where we're going to send one copy to the left side and the other copy to the right side, or, or one copy to the top, the other copy to the bottom. So this is the purpose of the uh, those spindle fibers to help ensure that we have equal amounts of DNA on either side of the cell. And then lastly, we progress to telophase. Telophase is the opposite of prophase, basically. So in telophase, we reform that nuclear envelope around the DNA, although it's going to happen twice now. So we reform a nuclear envelope here, we reform a nuclear envelope here. Our spindle breaks apart, we, it did its job. Kind of like when you take your pet for a walk, you put the, the leash, we take the pet for a walk, when we get back home, uh, we take that leash off, right? Um, and then the chromosomes have been tightly compacted. At this point, they start to relax and unravel and go back to their resting uh, sort of uh, arrangement there. So we have our nuclear envelope, our nuclear envelope that uh, has occurred within our, um, our same cell. So we have one single cell, telophase. Uh, at this same time, again, cytokinesis is, is, is sort of happening. And cytokinesis will then separate the cytoplasm, occur simultaneously with telophase, and it happens differently in plants and in animal cells. So plant cells, if you remember, uh, have a thick cell wall. So if we're going to cut one cell into two, we're going to have to address the issue of a cell wall. So we form a cell plate, which is basically a, a new cell wall component there. Animal cells do not have a cell wall. They just have the membrane. So it becomes a little bit less work uh, to separate these into two cells. So this is an animal cell. Here's one nucleus is reforming, one nucleus is reforming. And here we're causing that furrow to happen in the animal cells, like a pinching off. Uh, we pinch off, pinch off, pinch off that, that membrane and it eventually pinches off, reconfigures, and we have then two new cells. So it's like a constriction all the way around, a constriction all the way around that separates into two cells. Right? And that's in animals, the furrow. And plants, a little bit easier, uh, we just basically make a new cell wall in between and it, it cuts that membrane, membrane reconfigures and we have two new cells. So again, understand that this is happening in each and every cell, but the timing of when that happens is going to depend on the each and every cell. So uh, here, this is a, not a human cell, it's a plant these blocky square uh, onion root cells. But you can see that we have different cells at different activities, different times. So uh, I see one cell, I see a, a complete cell, I see a nucleus. So I know this cell is uh, just resting, right? The cell is an interface. Now I see a cell that looks very chaotic. Look at that chaotic mess. I see chromosomes. No nucleus, so that would be a cell in prophase. Uh, over here, it's not quite there yet. It's not picture perfect, but I see a cell trying to arrange the chromosomes in the middle. So this cell would be a cell in metaphase. Over here, I see a cell in which is separating its genetic material. So this cell here would be in anaphase. And this is, again, the... Um, the, the progression of, of, of phases until again we reform our nucleus. I don't see a good telophase here in this particular slide, but um, this is what would happen. And it just depends on what type of cell, what type of tissue we're looking at. Uh, if we're looking at, a, I don't know, like the skin cells, skin tissue of a baby, babies grow rapidly. So we have a lot of active mitosis. If we're looking at, uh, I don't know, some 
tissue in an elderly person where things happen very slow. We don't see a lot of cells in mitosis. We would see them in, uh, in interphase, the resting phase. So we can use these types of biopsies uh, to analyze in case somebody is, you know, maybe they think they have cancer. We can see what is the rate of cells that are actively dividing to the rate of cells that are at rest. And this is, again, how the biopsy uh, analysis would begin. We need a, a sample of that tissue area there. So um, again, looking at this whole process, really nice microscopy here, infrared mi microscopy. Uh, analyzing a human situation, right? We would start with 46 chromosomes. Those 46 chromosomes would replicate in the S phase of interphase. Um, we progress to prophase where our nucleus would dissolve, our chromosomes become visible, our spindle fiber begins to form. In this situation, our chromosomes are already starting to, again, diffuse everywhere. This is what we call prometaphase. It's a transition from prophase to actually metaphase, where our spindle has sort of extended throughout the whole cell. It's arranging the chromosomes in the center. In anaphase, we then have that separation, that splitting of the chromosomes. And then telophase, we reestablish a nucleus, we reestablish a nucleus. Uh, cytokinesis helps to separate the cytoplasm and we end up with two cells. So again, we started with one cell with 46 chromosomes. Now over here, we have two cells, each with 46 chromosomes. So that stays the same. But yeah, the cell cycle. So that's all the progression. Gap one, S stage, replicate the DNA, uh, go back to rest. And then prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then cytokinesis to go back to our gap one. So if you're okay with that, you're okay with mitosis, right? Uh, not that complicated. Um, hope that makes sense, though, and hope uh, you synchronize this with the video, and I think that makes a lot more sense. All right, so uh, I'm going to stop this one here, and then I'm going to progress to a very important part of the cell cycle, which are the regulatory checkpoints.